Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. So this video today is on a E class a E250 with the 2.2 uh, diesel engine, and uh, and uh, right. And uh, I had this car here uh, the other day to scan. Uh, I've used the Maxi C's at the time, and uh, basically uh, the car is going on into limp mode. Uh, the car, um, the engine light comes on, car goes in limp mode, and uh, obviously um, it's where it is. So I've scanned the car, and uh, the car is coming up with a fault for the DPF uh, differential pressure sensor. Had a quick look through the live data on the Maxi C's, and um, it was a little bit of a mix, a mixed feelings. Um, although the um, although the engine reports uh, a short, I believe it was a short uh, on that sensor. The sensor is reading. I get readings from the sensor. Uh, the DPF shows uh, or was showing over 100% blocked. Uh, was other things in there that didn't look very good. Um, and the car came here today uh, to attempt a regen or to fix the problem and attempt. Um, a regeneration. Um, I'm not going to use the Maxi C's this time uh, for the simple fact that um, Star will help me uh, a little bit more, especially with uh, diagrams and stuff like that, in case if I get um, to the need to measure anything. Um, and so we're going to use the Star. So we're going to connect uh, Star and we're going to scan the car and go from there. Okay, so uh, I don't know how good is going to be the picture, but so I've just uh, I've saved you from all the login stuff and all that and all that. And but we are now on the on the ECU, and that's the code. I'm sorry for the refresh rate, but that's the code. So it's a P two four five four double zero, and it says the input for differential pressure sensor one. In the diesel or gasoline particular filter as a short circuit to ground. So it's telling me that the, the that the sensor is short to ground. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to start the engine, and we're going to see that the sensor is actually working. Uh, So let's kind of go then. So let's go to actual values, uh, test while idling, boost pressure, diesel particle filter. Actual values. And as you can see, So the, the engine is cold, so the coolant temperature is low, but that's fine. So injection quantity, total regenerations 15, which I know is all right. Maxis is told me the same yesterday. Uh, and here is where things start to totally be wrong. Um, so uh, when the, the fill level, so is reading 105 when I first uh, scanned the car yesterday uh, It was actually yesterday the car came around um, That was actually reading under in 50 So it was not very good, but uh, regeneration is uh, initiated if the preconditions are satisfied So It should start a regeneration now the problem is when I check the history it's telling me that um, they are all failing, um, the last ones. Uh, but you can see there is 1.12 millibars. And when I rev the engine, I don't know how good you can see these guys. I really hope you can see it. So the, the pressure sensor is uh, 1.21. When I accelerate, look. You see, it's working just fine. 
is reading fine. So I, I do not really completely understand uh, why, although two bars is quite a lot, isn't it? So I don't understand why the car is reporting that fault. Um, I'm going to take some measurements uh, around the sensor and see uh, and see what's wrong in there. Why the ECU is seeing this fault. Okay, uh, before we go any further, I was just uh, trying to see the information here. That's why I'm using Star. Um, that's why I'm using this computer. Uh, so uh, the exhaust uh, pressure was reading one point something, and we we would change as we accelerate. But this is actually the differential. A pressure sensor. This is the sensor that measures the differential uh, between the the intake and the outtake of the um, the filter. The the filter, and it tells me here when you check the information, it says that uh, at uh, at an amb ambient temperature of plus or equal minus 15 degrees. With the ignition on and the engine off, the actual value must be between minus 0.04 and plus 0.04. And then when the engine is running, blah, blah, blah. I'm reading 0.995. Let's start the engine. And that doesn't change. So, I was looking at the wrong uh, sensor. So this sensor here is probably exhaust pressure sensor. It's going to be a different sensor surely somewhere. And this is actually my sensor for the differential, um, for the, the, the actually uh, DPF. I'm sorry if I was leading you in the wrong uh, thinking. Uh, yeah, that's the way it is. So. As you can see, this sensor doesn't change. It's, it's always the same pressure. So that one changes as I accelerate, but that one doesn't. So let's gonna remove that sensor, and um, and well, I'm gonna check the wiring first. But it's a quite brand new car, uh, but we'll have a look. We'll have a look. Okay, so I test the wire, so I've unplugged. I don't know if you can see, but I have unplugged this, which is the one that goes to the pressure sensor. The pressure sensor is right there behind, where that bolt is, is that one in there. So I've unplugged this, it's only a, a short run of wires. And uh, I'm try to place the camera here. And as you're going to see, I can find a path to each wire. So pin number, which pin is going to be this one on the sensor? Uh, it's pin number one. So pin number one comes to here, 0 0.2 ohms. And pin number two comes to here, 0 0.3 ohms. And pin number three comes to here. 0 0.4 ohms. Uh, checking the wires between themselves. As you can see, there is no shorts. So it's good. So this bit is good. So the next thing we're going to do. Next thing we're going to do is this. Uh, on this menu, we're going to go on the same menu, we're going to go right at the top where it says tests. Scroll it down and you're going to find check component B28-8 DPF differential pressure sensor. I'm going to press continue. <laughs> oh damn it, I need to have this connected. Just hold a second. Okay, so I was convinced, oh, I thought this would show me the diagrams uh, and what to look for, but it's actually something slightly different. So you can pause and read if you want. So it's telling me that uh, the, 
the coolant temperature should be between 10 and 85 is at 42 so that's fine so the voltage is between 0 0.5 um, and uh, 0 0.645 and then as you scroll down So, uh, that's where we are, uh, the voltage is between, no, a lot, uh, the value is okay, I'm going to say yes, because everything's fine. Uh, so what uh, raw value so is that zero point okay so I'm a little bit confused with this uh, that's where I get my wire diagrams okay just before I go to the wire diagrams I want to start the engine and I want to see if this voltage changes here uh, I don't think it's going to change uh, it stays pretty much the same as you can see Okay, so I was convinced that this would show me something different. It's gonna go to here. Uh, let me see if I go here. That's not what I want. Okay, so okay, and uh, so I need B twenty eight, not B twenty eight. Let me find my B28. And 10. B thirty seven. I think we're getting close. B twenty eight eight. So this is my sensor here. Okay. So this is my sensor here, which is fine. So my sensor pin one. Is goes to pin 53 straight into the ECU and that's my signal in that's my voltage out 
and the middle one is my ground which is shared with other stuff okay so let's gonna make sure I have these voltage um, at my sensor at least ground and voltage and um, if I have ground and voltage there then obviously I start to blame my sensor to start with so is pin 2 and pin 3 so let, let, let's gonna test that okay so I think you can read the screen so my pin number 3 is gonna be my 5 volts it's gonna get to ground somewhere here and we have 5.03 volts which is good then my ground So I'm just back probing this wire here, which is 12 volts, and you can see we have 11.99, so we have a good ground. But to make sure I have a good ground, I'm going to do something else. Okay, so the way we're going to check, make sure we actually have these voltages here, is using this, but I'm quite convinced we do have. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But when I put on 5 volts, I can see the, the filament starts to... I don't want to put too much because I don't want to put too much load on this wire. But it, it is in there. Now I'm going to look for a voltage somewhere. That is my voltage is right here. Let's see if I have voltage. Yes, I do. As you can... Oh, you can't see. No ground on this here. Uh, and then maybe we go. So I've connected this to the to the battery over there on that side, and let's gonna go to the ground and look at that. And we have ground. Okay. So this is good. The only next thing is my sensor. Okay, so under tests, uh, we now got to here. So this is where my sensor is. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to, to take off, but we'll, we'll have to find a way if it's the sensor. So here it tells me uh, what to check for, which we did already even we, before we got here. Uh, so pin two and three, we should have two negative. Uh, pin three, the five volts, and the measure should be that, which we did got. So we're going to press, yes, my measurement was fine. Um, and now we're going to test the signal. So uh, switch ignition off. And it's telling me. Okay, it tells me to put one of these little boxes. Uh, but basically it's telling me that uh, between pin 1 and pin 23, I should have less than one ohm, which I know it is. Okay, so this is basically to check the continuity between the sensor, the signal wire, and the ECU. So this this signal I know is fine. So and this is the end of the test. So it's telling me uh, check electrical connections, blah 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 blah. Everything's fine in there. Replace the component differential pressure sensor. So before we do that, um, that that's pretty much what, what, what I thought this would take me anyway. So what we're going to do next, I'm just going to check. Um, um, I'm going to try to remove that and try to check, make sure the lines are not blocked. Um, the, the, the lines that comes to the sensor, make sure they are not blocked. Um, and that's it really. I think this is a quite straightforward. After that, once we replace the sensor which I believe we're going to end up doing. Uh, we're going to have to probably um, go for a drive, make sure we can uh, set uh, a regen, uh, make sure the car regens, and we'll go from there. So for now, I'm going to try to take that sensor out. So I've just removed the sensor. Removing it was not that difficult. 
uh, with a screwdriver from the top you just unclip those clips in there put it back on that's gonna be a challenge I don't know how yet I got a new sensor just plug it in like that just to check the readings and uh, obviously I checked it previously but straight away look at that where it was reading pretty much the same as above an earlier bar look at that so now if I open this uh, information tab here as you can see it should be between minus zero zero four and plus zero zero four which is actually on the minus which is spot on okay uh, and uh, as I was trying to put everything back on even with a clear sky I don't know where the rain is coming from damn it um, I uh, with the rush because of the rain I now dropped the bolt on the end of trays so I've just put the car on the ramps I'm just waiting uh, to kind of stop raining uh, the sensor is all back in place um, I just need to plug it in and obviously get the bolt in place like I said I drop it on the end of trays oh dear um, but um, uh, just a quick tip to put it back on I found nearly impossible to use the same clips. I have the pliers to crimp those uh, clips, but th th there's no room, simply as that. So I had to use uh, two small Jubilee clips. They will do the job. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna wait to stop raining and get into the car, uh, take the end of the tray and try to get hold of the bolt again. Uh, lovely, lovely British weather. Okay, so the new sensor is now, everything is, is in place and I just wanted to look at that. So we have a lovely reading. The fill level, as you can see in there, came down straight away to 56%. Okay, and I just want to go back to error codes. Okay, so this is probably stored, as you can see, it's not current, that is probably from the other um, from the other sensor. So we're going to clear this, and there's no fault codes, and I just want to go make sure that uh, under adaptations, there's nothing to reset the filter, the, um, sorry, the, the sensor. High pressure circuit teaching of this particular replacement. No. Replacement of the particle filter. Now I don't. I don't think. Quantity calibration. I don't think there is nothing here, uh, guys. The, the screen is crap, isn't it? I don't think there's nothing here for the sensor. Some cars they request for you to re-zero the sensor, sort of. This car doesn't ask you for nothing, so so we don't need to reset anything. No. No. So there's nothing here to do resets or anything like that. So we don't need Regeneration of the devil while driving, retrofit. I think what we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna do a re uh, regeneration anyway, because I don't know for how long the car was driving like this. So it's always better to probably do a regen. Uh, although, um, looking at this uh, live data, guys, I really do apologize for this screen. Looking at this uh, live data, it's, it's, I can't see really nothing wrong. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fifty six per cent. So uh, it's, it's, it looks absolutely fine to me. I mean, if he was clogged, I would say 
that pressure would go up that pressure would be much more than this um, obviously so we still have battery for one hour 24 minutes give or take so I think we're gonna go for a drive uh, see if he activates a regen um, and then we'll go from there really but I think I'm happy with the result I believe we fixed the problem um, but yeah I'm gonna go for a drive and see see what happens Okay guys, so I just went for a drive through the motorway and uh, just came out and stopped and uh, the um, fuel level of the diesel particle filter went down to 30% uh, but the the ash content still at 0 0.7 which, well, if the maximum is 10 we still a little bit quite close to the limit uh, so I was thinking about um, actually perform a regen on a car to be fair with you actually look at that temperature 550 degrees it might be that the regen is actually going look 99 percent at 99 degrees the engine temperature it might be that he's actually doing a regen. Can I see that here somewhere? So let's kind of. Oh, guys, you can't see nothing. So there's still no codes. So our problem was indeed that sensor. Uh, that's no doubt. Uh, it looks like the car is actually doing a regen. Um, it really does look. Uh, judging by the temperature of the exhaust uh, and judging by the fact that the. Um, um, where are we? And judging by the fact that the. Look at that, 26%. And look at those temperatures. I'm gonna drive for a little bit longer and uh, and see what happens. Hey okay, guys, just got back home and uh, I'm really happy with the results. Um, so as you can see now, my fill level of diesel uh, particles. So it was indeed doing a regen. On the last clip I've showed it, it was doing a regen. Those temperatures here, they went up some of them, actually the the one the one of the turbocharger, that one in there, went actually above the 666. Um, they were all high temperatures on both of them, and uh, the the um, the fill level of the diesel particle uh, particulate filter was just coming down and down and down and stopped just below uh, one percent. Obviously, I've just got home. Uh, the car has been here idling, that, that is just increasing a little bit, but so the car was indeed doing a regen, so as soon as the car uh, seen that uh, the the reading on the on there came back on, the car just did a regen straight away. Um, so yeah, the, obviously the hash content, that's a different story. Um, it's still high, it's going to stay high, but um, I was, earlier I was not thinking straight, uh, the hash the ash content will, will not change, will just carry on increasing until you either take the DPF and clean it or you replace the DPF. That's just the way it works. Um, I've kind of, so yeah, so the, the, the reason why the car was not doing a regen, although that was um, over 100%, uh, was because of that error uh, and the no readings on the, on the differential uh, pressure sensor. So that was uh, the only problem. Um, as we have seen in there, just curiosity that needs to be between, so when you reach 100% a, re a regeneration is initiated, if everything else is fine, uh, if it reaches 200% it just stops um, uh, regens. Uh, I can explain you the principle on my video for the 730 diesel that I've published some time ago. Uh, this is the same principle really, uh, so if he sees that he's way too clogged, he's not going to perform a regen due to obviously um, high temperatures and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, so that's um, 
that's it for this video really I mean I drove the car I drove fine never went into limp mode just been running absolutely perfect so in this case it was a bad um, sensor uh, which we diagnosed not just by the fault code but we diagnosed as well by the live data uh, just a curiosity that is quite interesting I never took you through because as you've seen it was raining and you know look at these now they this <laughs> unbelievable um, but yes yeah, so uh, the, the the only reason um, why I didn't uh, show you what I'm gonna explain it now was because of the weather because I, I was not sure if it would rain and that was it um, I've, I've put the old uh, DPF sensor uh, the old sensor uh, just plugged in not connected uh, to the to the pipes just plugged in after I don't know after 10 minutes 15 minutes of being off the engine and and it, it just came in read fine okay and it just started to give me this reading as well but I had the new one here by then so but I think what was happening was uh, that was getting shorted with the, the pressure so as you would start reading uh, pressure would get shorted uh, that I think that's what uh, what was happening uh, but yeah definitely was a bad sensor that's fixed and that's it for this video really um, hope you enjoyed the video hope there's some information here you can uh, you can appreciate and you can uh, learn something from this video um, if you have any questions still any comments please put them below and like always thank you so much for watching